So our next our next presenter is going to talk a little bit about a local celebrity. Here on Mount Desert Island, we are very lucky. We do have lots of local celebrities, myself being one of them. <laughs> Another being Martha Stewart, just over in Seal Harbor. We won't talk about her. <laughs> and the next is going to be um, Sam McGee's great aunt, Mame. So Sam McGee is going to come and present for you. Okay. Okay, ready to go? I'm ready. Okay, <laughs> good. My aunt Mary Louise Savage was born August 1910 in the Astaku neighborhood of Northeast Harbor and lived across from the Astaku Inn for most of her 87 years. The inn was built and operated by her relatives, and here she is as a baby in 1902 in her mother Emily's lap in front of her father John's barn on Astaku Way. The next image is Mary's fifth birthday. She's in the left on the front row with the short crop hair looking cross-eyed. <laughs> Behind her are brothers Sam, John, and my grandfather Dick Savage. The girl next to her in the middle of the front row with curly hair and dress is, in fact, her boy neighbor, Elbridge Petter. <laughs> he lived at the intersection of Route 198, and his mother wanted a daughter but bore a son. In addition to an almost all-male cast of siblings, cousins, and neighbors, Mary also had a special lifelong friendship with her younger brother, Ralph, who was two years her junior. This picture taken in the 20s shows them in a field along Astaku Way. Mary was always more comfortable keeping her hair short and dressing in traditionally masculine clothes. Later in high school, with the coaxing and encouragement of her mother, Emily, and Aunt May Bell, Mary did wear more normative female attire, as we can see from this picture in 1927. Here she is with her dogs, the German Shepherd is Trixie, and the small Spaniel is named Rascal. Mary would des describe herself as a poor student and often said, I wasn't much for school, and it wasn't much for me. <laughs> it's true she stayed back two grades during her secondary years, and there may have been good reasons. An abusive teacher doled out draconian punishments, such as beating Mary and her brother Ralph for being left-handed and forcing them to write and draw with their right hands. Despite a less than positive public school education, Mary left Northeast Harbor and trained as an infant nurse at the North Shore Baby Hospital in Salem, Massachusetts, and enjoyed a career as a nurse's aide at Mass General. Her pleasant, nurturing personality was well matched with her career, and she often went to the homes of affluent young mothers to help them with their infants in the first few weeks of life. Mary and her brothers would come home seasonally to help their mother get their big house ready to rent to summer guests. This involved a twice annual move to and from a nearby cottage. Here she is, rake in hand, doing spring cleaning in 1933 with her mother Emily and brothers Sam and Dick. In the early 40s, when her mother became ill and died, Mary left Boston and came home to Astaku for good. Mary was a welcoming, generous soul who unselfishly opened her doors for friends and family. Her toddler nephew, Stuart, could not pronounce her name and called her Mame, a name that stuck for life. And from then on, two generations of savage cousins had a great aunt made. Here she is in front of her two-bedroom home, shared in the summer months with her sister-in-law, Ernestine, brother Dick, and three children. Mary loved and cared for animals, children, and family, and survived seasonal resort rhythms of life in Northeast Harbor with a variety of odd jobs during the 40s and 50s. She raised goats and sold their milk, took in laundry for summer folks, and provided child care for the babies of a number of summer and year-round residents. Another one of Mary's vocations was raising bees. <laughs> Notwithstanding her infectious, enthusiastic sense of humor, Mary approached any new job or hobby in a methodical, scientific manner. This included routinely marching into the Northeast Harbor Post Office in full beekeeping regalia to pick up her latest delivery of bees. <laughs> Ever practical, Mame developed into more feminine territory to earn a year-round living. At age 47, she obtained her driver's license and became a traveling salesperson for Avon Cosmetics <laughs> and Ladies Fresh Soaps brand underwear. She went all in and exchanged her mannish garb for a stylish skirt and curly wig and makeup that she called war paint. In her downtime, Maine preferred fun and outrageous, and here she is smoking cigars in 1961 with her older brother and next door neighbor Dick. Maine was not about shock value for its own sake, but she was about being her own person and savoring life's moments with friends and family. Though Maine was a late adopter, her chosen car brand was the unique and cutting edge early Saab with its fuel efficient teardrop shape and thrifty lawnmower engine. Maine found year round employment at the Jackson Lab in the mouse room. She joked during work commutes with fellow employees they would rock back and forth in the Saab to get up near Revere's Hill in Seal Harbor. <laughs> 
When Mae retired in the 70s from the lab, she embraced retirement with active curiosity and joy. It gave her more time to pursue her hobbies, new and old, including photography and music. Mae opted for quality in her gadgets. Her cameras were Leicas, and when she took up playing acoustic guitar at age 70, a Martin D18 was her instrument of choice. Mae was a naturally gifted musician. Her mother bought her a piano at age five and paid for her to attend music school. This well-worn piano is now in my home and seen three more generations of the keys. While traditional training did not stick with her, she loved to sing. In addition to guitar and piano, she played accordion, dulcimer, and recorder. She shared this love of music with anyone, and anyone coming into her home is welcome to try out one of her many instruments. She also loved entertainment and technology. In addition to instruments, she had all manner of board games, an automatic card shuffler, and she was an avid CB radio operator. <laughs> she was one of the first senior citizens to wear Nike sneakers in the 1980s, and she could often be seen walking around town in the shoes listening to her Sony Walkman. <laughs> Mame had a downy sense of humor, often punctuated with cuss words. In the 80s, a spoof of L.L. Bean's mail-order catalog came out. One of the featured products was the main grunting shoe, a farting variant prototype of the Nike Air. <laughs> Upon seeing this fake product, Mame quipped to my mother, Jesus, sissy, the mixed stuff's so goddamn cheap nowadays, I bet those sneakers would wear out after one fart. <laughs> Much to the delight of my cousins and me, Mame had a full smorgasbord of instant foods at the ready for impromptu meals. My favorites included Tang Instant Breakfast Treats, Swiss Miss Hot Cocoa, and Quaker Oatmeal. Her primary culinary talent was boiling water, and we got to eat and drink from a whistle from your beer mug while she enjoyed Sanka coffee. <laughs> but perhaps the greatest gifts Mame shared with her family, friends, and neighbors were time, patience, and a place to spend time together in her home, the old L. She endured my tortured beginnings on the guitar and encouraged me to keep playing. Though we were two generations apart, she was not only my great aunt, but a special friend for life. Her positive spirit radiated throughout her home, which has now become mine. Mame took joy in her immediate surroundings. Perhaps this was easy due to the beautiful, varied landscapes on Mount Desert Island. One of her favorite places to go on an almost daily basis in her later years was over the brook into the Astaku Azalea Gardens designed by her cousin and neighbor, Charles Savage. <laughs> Ten points to Sam for finishing exactly on time. <laughs>